The acquisition of the asbestos-laden North Eye site in East Sussex for £15.4 million epitomises the hurried and poorly managed approach to policy execution uh, that was um, the, 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 that was the, 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 the hallmark of Suella Braverman's Home Office um, and it, it leaves the Home Office under a critical spotlight. This purchase intended to alleviate the financial and political strain of housing asylum seekers in hotels, then costing £8 million a day, was emblematic of a government scrambling to deliver on its promises at any cost uh, in its pursuit of the ridiculous Rwanda scheme. Under Suella Bravman's tenure as Home Secretary, a climate of intense pressure magnified by the then Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's December 2022 vow to end hotel accommodation culminated in a decision-making process marred by oversight failures and risk-laden shortcuts and stupidity. Why are we remotely surprised? Because Suella Braverman, um, Cruella de Vil, was in charge. This was never going to work out well, and I'm sure this is just one of many... Um, failures that will come to light over the next few years demonstrating the absurdity and the idiocy of that period of the Home Office. But it, it was an idiocy set up by Blunkett um, long ago, magnified by Theresa May's hostile environment and gradually getting worse and worse. It's given us the Windrush scandal. It's given us the Grenfell scandal. It's given us, uh, in part, the post office scandal, but definitely the uh, asylum scandal. It's about the mismanagement of life in the United Kingdom on the assumption that people can be bullied by uh, knee-jerk legislation into capitulating to whatever diktat from the government seems uh, seems seems useful at the time. It's about short termism without doing the hard work. Why? Because so many people in government are lazy. We've seen it from Kemi Badenoch, we've seen it in Liz Truss, monumentally in both cases. Laziness. Laziness, in the case of Liz Truss, laziness exemplified as a virtue. Put it on a sheet of A4, one side. Too much writing. It's monumentally insane to think the government policy can be reduced to a few bullet points and that the and that that is all the uh, minister should be shown monumentally insane but this level of insanity has crept into the way government works and I don't imagine that is necessarily that different under the Labour Party we've developed a system for government that is more where where ministers are more inclined to be knocking back whiskey downing pints and sniffing white powder than they are going through their red boxes and that is disturbing and we have wryly nodded and smirked about the people who've come out to admit that these things are going on but the people we know about it's the it's the tip of the iceberg what is even more disturbing is just how um, how much of an open secret this is and somebody needs to blow the whistle and somebody needs to clear, to clean the organ stables of Westminster. It's not a party political thing. It's a parliamentary institutional thing. The National Audit Office's um, report about the purchase of the East Sussex site, this ex-military site, 
uh, underscores how this hastened move led to the purchase of a site considered to be high risk because of the asbestos contamination and other environmental hazards. And significantly, the final decision to acquire North Eye bypassed conventional due diligence uh, and demonstrated a marked departure from standard practices. Ministers including Robert Jenrick, Oliver Dowden, both of them twits, of course, particularly the latter, were implicated in the expedited removal um, of oversight, uh, the, 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 the um, hurried approval that overlooked key technical advice, um, such as an estimated £20 million in repair costs, uh, which was notably absent from the minister's briefing. Why? Why? Bravman's legacy in this matter is one of reactive rather than proactive governance. The decision to push forward without comprehensive risk assessments exemplifies her administration's willingness to prioritise short-term political imperatives over meticulous evidence-based formulation. And the NAO's assertion that corners were cut underlines a broader pattern of governance that emphasises urgency at the expense of prudence and anticipation. The miscalculation culminated in the Home Office overpaying for a site unsuitable for its intended use, casting doubts on the uh, efficacious nature of such decisions um, in the face of rising public and political scrutiny. While current ministers attempt to distance themselves by attributing the fallout to past leadership, and Braverman herself has remained silent, the ramifications are ongoing. The expenditure, the re... Um, the reupholstering costs, uh, the, the 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 effort to 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 um to, to to pay for the work to rectify the public dissatisfaction with figures like Sir Geoffrey Clifton Brown lambasting the deviation from standard practice and calling attention to the Home Office's lack of due oversight. This goes beyond the specific stupidity of individual ministers. This goes to the heart of the Home Office itself. How on earth can uh, due oversight be overlooked unless civil servants were prepared to continue their lazy day approach, their hostile environment approach? Because the hostile environment is simply understood in the Home Office. So I have been told reliably by more than one source as uh, an understanding of indolence. It's about not working. It's about not doing the job. And here we have another example of not doing the job. It's an excuse. And the North Eye debacle reflects a cautionary tale for future execution. The balance between rapid response and robust due diligence must be carefully maintained. The Home Office needs a clean out just as Parliament needs a clean-out, because the Home Office has been useless since Blunkett. Theresa May just, just um, defined it. But she was pretty useless as well. Useless in the Home Office and utterly useless in Number 10. What is extraordinary about Theresa May is that she suddenly found a voice and some sort of um, backbone after she resigned from office. She was brilliant, poking Boris Johnson from the back benches. Brilliant. But we waited a long time for that, for that little moment of theatre. But the theatre is the public face of the House of Commons, is the public face of government. And so if the theatre isn't right, the government isn't right. And we look at the theatre at the moment in the House of Commons and we see two people with their heads buried in the paperwork which has been prepared for them by their assistants, whether civil servants or cronies on the uh, front bench of the opposition. And they don't seem capable of constructing real thought on the hoof. And yet that's precisely what the departments are accused of doing. It's about a casualness and an inability to do the work. It's about laziness. 
that has become institutional. So the balance between a rapid response and due diligence. Uh, this needs to be this this needs to be looked at properly. The subsequent inquiry by Parliament's Public Accounts Committee seeks to unravel not just the cost implications but the governance failure that has left a derelict asbestos-ridden former prison as an emblem of rushed policy. As it stands, Suella Brabham's lingering impact on this costly misadventure remains a testimony to the pitfalls of political haste and administrative oversight and, dare I say, conservative government. But I don't think, I don't think we should jump to conclusions. I don't think that where, that where blame can be apportioned to the last conservative um, administration, it cannot also be apportioned to previous Labour administrations and to the current Labour administration and to earlier Conservative administration. This is about the disease of laziness and arrogance that runs through Parliament. And it needs to be rooted out. It needs to be called out. It needs to be mocked. And individuals need to be named.